Hi everyone, my name's Matt Gunn and I'm here with Tony Fry who's going to talk to us about his new book, Writing Design Fiction, Relocating the City in Crisis. So, Tony, what prompted you to write the book? Uh, a variety of things. Partly it was a critique of design fiction as it currently is. Uh, I thought it was more important than the way in which it's presented as being. So that was one motivation. But secondly, I, I think that you know, the potential for design fiction in terms of a kind of a political strategy in, uh, in design agency uh, is really under-realised. So I, I wanted to be able to demonstrate that design fiction could actually be more politically powerful than it is at the moment. Okay. And how is your approach to design fiction different from current practices in design? Okay, so I first need to say a little bit about those practices insofar as they are plural. Uh, so there is what is presented under the kind of aegis of design fiction and then there is speculative design, there's scenario design, there's design futures, and a few other things. So they're very similar, or they're overlapping, around quite often the same objective. Uh, so I think the first thing I wanted to do was to create a larger frame, to bring all of those things into one perspective. But, and then you know, critique that condition of limitation. And to be able to do that, I employed something that I drew from second order cybernetics. So uh, effectively, what second order design fiction enabled me to do was to create a new method. Uh, and that new method uh, was really directed towards being able to address far more complex design problems than are normally the case with design fiction. Why did you choose to relocate to a city in crisis? Because uh, that was a good example of a really complex problem. I mean, if you ask the question, you know, where do you start to begin to think about design, or what is there to design when you think about relocating the city? Obviously, all sorts of possibilities and imperatives uh, and constraints arrive. So, the, the design fiction, the method, is to kind of write a story that really covers all of those things, uh, the, where the complexity is kind of revealed through the narrative and the complexity also arises by different characters representing different perspectives and interests. So you build the complexity not with a, an over-determined narrative, but by the multiplicity of narratives that tells the story from different perspectives. Uh, then the response would be really how to deal with that complexity. And that's where the, the other dimension of the project arrives, because all of that material then becomes an object of reflection. Hence, the uh, second order dimension. So the first order is the narrative, the overarching narrative, being an observation, a speculative observation on the task of moving or relocating the city. The second observation is upon that itself. Looking for the limitations, looking for the problems, looking for the strengths, looking for the weaknesses, but above all, really kind of focusing on what is missing. So that then takes you to the third dimension of the project, which is really the kind of thing that resituates the whole project of writing design fiction because the objective 
is to provide a brief, a way of writing a brief for a really complex project. Unlike what normally happens with design fiction, which is uh, to really create a design conversation around a particular kind of design development or product, often in a kind of an avant-garde way, often with an, a, a, a utopian kind of perspective. So this is very different. It is very much more situating the engagement with the fiction in relation to a problem that is imminent, that needs to be addressed. So why do you think fiction is important for design? Well, I think we have to start by kind of recognising in a way that fiction is a form of design. In fact, historically, the two things etymologically were the same thing. So, in this respect, I'm trying to demonstrate the power of fiction as a design agency. Now, if you actually step back and look at fiction, there are multitudes of examples of books that have had an enormous design impact as fictions. Uh, William Gibson's New Romance is a really good example. You know, that's the book where the concept of cyberspace came from. So the way in which Gibson developed that narrative, you know, created imaginaries out of which material things were formed. And that, in a sense, uh, is uh, what I'm trying to do with the way in which I'm approaching design fiction. Not so much in a kind of a futuristic way, because uh, first of all, there is going to be a massive a project of moving many cities because of climate change. In fact, I, I can give you two very brief examples. In uh, 2008, I worked on moving the city of Jalavari in northern Sweden with a group of other designers from around the world. So part of my ability to write this fiction comes from that experience. But then if you move to the current situation, the capital of uh, Indonesia, Jakarta, is being moved to Kalimantan because of a variety of things, including climate change impacts. And one of the impacts upon Jakarta is that the inundation of the silt upon which the city was built has meant the city's process of sinking has accelerated and over its history Jakarta has sunk by 2.5 metres. So, you know, there is a, a lot of things happening, a lot of things going on that grounds writing deep design fiction both in the present and in response to problems coming in the future. So where does this project take you now? Well, I've, I've from doing these projects, I've cons convinced myself that uh, design fictions are actually even more important than I thought in the first place. So I've committed myself to do more than one. I'm not sure how many I'll end up doing, but I've, I've done one other which is in the process of being edited, and I've also worked on the third. Um, and I've tried to kind of work it in a different kind of way. So the first book, the one that we're talking about, Writing Design Fictions, is both a presentation of the method and its demonstration. So the story in there is 35,000 words. What I've now done is to write a book that is completely a fiction, 85,000 words, and the, the method simply manifests itself through the narrative. And that's a story about moving 200,000 Rohingya refugees to eastern Malaysia on the island of Borneo. 
Uh, and the whole point of that uh, fiction is to kind of invert how refugees are seen. They're seen as a problem to be managed by institutions, not least the United Nations. Whereas the story that I've told is using those refugees to address the massive deforestation in Borneo, both in Malaysia uh, and in Kalimantan. So uh, that means not only do you have to bring this, the uh, people there, which is itself a logistical massive problem, but then 200,000 people have to be accommodated, so there's the whole uh, issue of you know creating the fabric of communities, and then there's how you actually bring them to the possibility of reforestation. So there are lots of, again, stories within that. So it's a challenging task, and one of the things that it attempts to do is to create an imaginary that you can put in front of people who are actually trying to manage these problems with the potentiality that some of it or all of it will actually influence their actions. So this fiction has been written and it isn't going to be published in the conventional way. It's actually going to be self-published with the intent of giving the book away to all the NGOs and all the United Nations agencies involved in the issue of refugees, plus uh, whoever else wants the book will get a copy. So it will be on the Studio of the Edge of the World website. So can you tell us a bit more how you're thinking about the city? Yeah. Um, what I did was I created a fictional city called Harshong, which is a kind of really borderland city. It's between the east and the west. Um, so as a kind of a cosmopolitan community. It's a port city uh, on a delta. Uh, and delta cities are at the greatest risk from sea level rises. So the people who are most concerned about this, the, the, the local politicians and the local business people, you know, came to the inclusion, sorry, came to the conclusion that uh, they needed to move the city. Uh, and a whole process was initiated. But this was in the kind of global context of other cities around the world moving. Uh, the cost of doing that have a major impact upon nations. And it became part of a global economic crisis as well. So uh, it was uh, dealing with the city itself, but it was also dealing with the state of the world in which relocating cities was happening. So from that perspective, uh, the, the process was identified around disassembling the city that existed. Uh, and using that material as the primary source of constructing the new city. Uh, after identifying the site to be located and the form of that new city. And that is indivisible from creating a motive to move. There has to be something that people want to move to. Now not everybody wants to move, so not the entire population was moved. Some people decided they didn't want to do that and went elsewhere. So the story unfolds around the whole process, challenges, problems, human dramas of moving the city in deteriorating circumstances.